first and foremost, um, if you hear my children giggling, screaming, whatnot, they're watching their nighttime movie. Um, they were given a little bit of grace. So hopefully uh, that works out for me. I'm not feeling very positive about it, but we'll we'll see how that goes. If you hear anything, that's, that's what's going on. Um, but what we're making tonight is a little canvas. Um, it's one of the thicker canvases. Uh, so we have all the details on the side as well as some of the butterflies that are wrapping around the side. Um, so you're going to see the butterflies are uh, popped off the little canvas just slightly and I'm going to use a stencil here. Uh, quite a few of the stencils that we're going to be using tonight. Um, so I'm just going to run through the products real quick that I used to make this. Um, sorry I was distracted by the children who are out there supposed to be being quiet. And they're trying to kill each other. Okay, um, to make the butterflies, I used two Martha Stewart punches. Um, mainly, uh, actually, for the canvas that I showed you, I used this just one, but I did mix some uh, in with this one tonight. So we'll see. Stucco, which is one of our textured pastes. Textured paste. Um, it's one of the two that we have. The other one is mud. Um, tonight I'll be using stucco. Um, I'm using a mix of velvets. Um, so, pretty pink, purple, yellow, and orange, so what, Tango, Lemon Tart, Fiesta, and Mardi Gras. Um, for the original canvas, I used the Metal Effects Silver. But I am not crazy about exactly how this turned out, so I wanted to try and just use um, a little bit of the stone effects this time. And this one is lava, right? I'm pretty sure. One well, of the black stone effects, okay? So I'm going to use that instead for this one. For the, and then you can see I just added just a little bit of extra dots here and that is a sorbet and that is tink. This really pretty bright green color. Okay. And a Sin City stamp. Um, just a little bit of extra background action going on there. And our bubble stencil. The crack stencil because you know I can't live without it. Um, I forget what this one is. Can't read it. I got stuff on it. Anyways, our words. And this, I have Blossom, I think it is. I think this means Blossom. Um, and those are the stencils that I used to make the canvas as well. Okay. Uh, mix of colorations, like I said before. Uh, Studio Blue. Lark. Ink Spot. Raider. I don't know why I use this color. I can't say it. Um, Wami Bay. Um, I'm sure that's wrong. Stacy knows that I can't say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So now that we've been through all the products, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the canvas. So I should have opened it, but we'll open it now. Okay. So, the first thing I did was I built a little bit of the blossom uh, texture here. So you're going to see this right here. And to do that, I, of course, used our stucco. So we'll start with that. The thing to remember when you're using... Well, when you're doing um, any kind of texture paste on a canvas, is it it, it pushes down. Um, so you want to make sure that you're keeping your stencil 
in contact with your canvas at all times um, and making sure that you're not getting paste underneath your stencil. So you don't want to go backwards or side to side or up and down. You want to be very fluid with your strokes one way and complete your whole stroke. Um, because if not, you're going to have a mess and you're not really going to have that pretty blossom. So get this started here. And like I said, just make sure that you're really holding it down. It's going to be a little tricky to stay on camera while I'm doing this, so bear with me. You know, if it doesn't work perfectly, it it's fine. I mean, it's not going to kill anything. It's just a project. It's no reason to be devastated. You can always start over or you can just leave it. It's everything usually works out. It's not supposed to be stressful. Okay. I'll lift that up. You can, oh, I got some on my camera. <laughs> Whoops. You can see I got it. It lifted up a little bit on me down here, but that's fine. It's just a little bit. Um, see? Just a tiny bit. Pretty good, all things considered. I'm just going to wipe some of this off my stencil and continue on. And I'm just going to shoot this top part with a little bit of heat. That way it doesn't move if the stencil touches it. I don't want to get my heat gun too close to it because if I do, the paste will bubble up. And I don't want to make like an explosion. <laughs> but this one does dry pretty quickly. Um, so I was fairly confident in our time frame. So we'll see. And there we go. I want to wrap this one over on the top here. Okay. So again, holding our stencil firmly in place. Across the whole image. Even strokes. Trying really hard not to let that stencil move while staying on camera. No. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Not too bad. We can live with that. Or at least I can. <laughs> okay. Wipe this off so I can get a little bit on the sides there. I'm going to dry this before I move it. You know, some people are like, well, why would you do the size of the canvas? Why are you going to waste your product? Yada, yada, yada. For me, this is a thick canvas, so I want to make sure I do something on the sides because when you hang it, you don't want the sides of it just to be plain. So I figure might as well put something pretty up there, right? I just got a special delivery. Got 
going to make sure this is dry so I can do the other side of the canvas as well. A little more stucco, smooth, even stroke, hold the stencil in place. Okay, there we go. And that is it for our stucco tonight. Let me wipe this stencil off a little bit more and I'll clean it up later. I'm going to get my splurge <laughs> for the day. Um, my husband brought me home a Slurpee. Those of you who know what a Slurpee is. I got a big old Slurpee. Sorry about the heat gun. There was no way to avoid it. I really want to make sure that this is pretty dry, um, mainly because I'm going to be adding colorations on top of it, and I don't want it to move when it has water with the mist on top of it. Okay. Okay. Give that a second to cool off. Um, whenever you're going to heat dry something, you want to give it a few minutes to cool off before you add your next layer. Or you're just going to, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> Okay, so to make all these butterflies, um, I could have used coloration spray, sprayed out some paper, um, and called it a day, but I wanted, I wanted it to be very, I wanted the butterflies to be very even, um, so for that I used, um, for that reason I used our velvet paint. Um, I started with my paintbrush already wet. Uh, so the paint would thin out a little bit and I did continue to add a little bit of water while I was painting across the paper. So I'm just going to do it real quick with the pink and then you guys will know how I did it and we'll just skip the rest of it. Okay? So I just covered a piece of paper and again I started with a wet paintbrush to thin this paint out because I wanted it to be a very thin even coat. And you can see how quickly that moves across the paper and how even that is because when you're going to punch on top of that you don't want it to be a really thick coat or it's going to break your punch so that's why I started with water already on my brush and just moved it along like that okay but for the sake of you watching me paint back and forth on paper, I skip. I'm going to skip that part for you because I went ahead and did all that earlier, and then after they were dry, after this sheet of paper was dry, I just used my punches and punched out a bunch of butterflies. Okay, but there's no reason for you to. Oh, it's a it's a Coke slushy. <laughs> it's pretty good too. But there's no reason for you guys to watch me punch out a bunch of butterflies. I think you can handle that. You're all crafty wizards. But I got lots of butterflies here, so I'll just be able to uh, use them on a bunch of things. Maybe I'll make some extra birthday cards or something. Who knows? Back to our canvas. 
and I used a mix of blues here. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have any white spots. I think I'm good. Okay. No rhyme or reason with this. Just lots of blue. Just making sure that I cover all my sides because this is not a primed canvas, so it's not, um, it does not have a layer of gesso on it. I'm really making sure that I saturate the canvas so it sinks in and I get all the color in there. Okay. And that one was Studio Blue. This is the lighter one, the one today. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but you know, it's okay. Someone will forgive me. Okay, I'm gonna add in Lark. And Ink Spot. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I got some puddles there. I'm going to just tip my canvas and let them work together. Okay. And then I'm going to dry this. Again, sorry for the heat gun. I know that is an awful noise. going to go back in to get some variation. I'm just going to dip for the color that's on. That's on the table. I don't want to waste. So I'm going to try and dip there and dry. And dry, dry, dry. Now I'm just going to pick up the brush and pick up some of the color that's on my table and get it on my white parts. before I go back and add a little bit more. Okay. And I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of 
ink spot and drip that down. And just keep moving it around the canvas. Bring in some more. And dry. And then we'll move right along. Now, I could have achieved this with paint, but I really just wanted the way the colorations blended together, um, just for like the watercolor effect on the canvas. Um, and like I said earlier, I could have put gesso on there, but I really just wanted the colorations to seep into the canvas to have that texture of the canvas without filling it up with gesso. Plus, when you're moving the, the mist around with your heat tool, you can make the pattern, change the movement of it, um, add little effects, move the color around a little bit more. It's just fun. and then we'll be done with the mist and we'll move on to the next step. Just grabbing some of the color off of here because you know it just seems wrong to waste it. <laughs> okay, let me grab a tag real quick. Because Lord forbid I I waste that. starting to feel like a smurf. Okay. So, so my glue sticks, let's make sure that I'm 100% dry. And I'm going to add a little bit more texture to the stencil with some Raider through the cracked stencil. Just see that. Dry it up real quick. You don't want to forget the sides. Thank you. 
and dry. Use that same tag. And there we go. Okay. Next stencil I used was the bubbles. And for this one, I used plush. See those fun little dots. And then on the side as well. Oops, Ray, that was Raider. Whoopsie. That's okay. Dry that up and move to the other side. I'm just gonna add some sliders there with all that extra mist, wipe my stencil off, and dry. Okay, is Stacy on? Yeah, no. I was going to give Stacy the option to have a different word since this is going out to her. Okay. So let's see. So, same rules apply. Um, even coat, smooth motion, hold the stencil in place. Woo! I went somewhere, I have no idea where it went. Okay. So, again, I'm using um, the stone effects. I believe this is lava. And I'm sure my finger is right in the way, but I need to make sure that I hold that stencil in place. Okay, and then the lift. Perfect. Gotta love stone effects, man. Gotta love stone effects. Okay. That's okay. If Stacy was on, she would have spoke up and said, no, I want a different word, but she didn't, so it's okay. <laughs> no worries. Okay. 
Okay. Wipe off my stencil and I'm going to dry this up. Now, uh, the real technical thing of this, but it does add a lot of pretty color to it, so it's well worth it, um, is I glued the butterflies on the canvas. I know, it's crazy, right? I didn't think about where I was placing them. I didn't. How that really hurt. I just stabbed myself. Ouch. Okay, just uh, start adding glue. I'm just using a quick dry scotch. You could use any. Um, I just wanted something that would dry clear, and I use this a lot in my scrapbooking, and I know it dries clear, so. Um, I don't really care if the butterflies overlap. Um, I just want to make sure that I really pack them in there. So, lots of glue. <laughs> and just kind of like a swarm pattern. And then I'll go back as needed. I didn't worry about where I was placing them and what color I was placing. I just grabbed butterflies and just started placing butterflies. Little pinch to fold up the wings and mush them down into the glue. I have three different sizes of butterflies. So that was the one thing I was mindful of is trying to get a mix of the different sizes and not just all the big ones that I'm grabbing now. <laughs> But you can see how much the butterflies pop with the color. The dark with the dark blues, the contrast of the bright velvet. It's really very pretty. I could have taken this one step further if you're a glitter girl and you could add some fairy dust on your butterflies before you stick them down. I'm not that much of a glitter girl. I like bling, but I don't know. I just like uh, this the way that it was. But just an option. I'm going to have lots of butterflies left, so I'll sure I'll make some birthday cards and I'll share them on the Facebook page so you guys can see. And I just want to make sure that I fill up the whole area. Lots of butterflies. Oh, sorry about that. And 
please don't stab yourself again. Must be moving a little bit slower than I thought I would because my glue was starting to dry up on me. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I get all these little guys glued down. And then uh, I'm going to move to the side. And then I think we'll be done. Oh, no. One other thing. Filling up there. Then just a couple on the side. Now the thing about using paper for this is if you do decide you want to lay the canvas on this on its side on the shelf, you can just mush the, the butterflies down and it won't really matter. Um, if they were something, if they were wood, the canvas wouldn't lay flat, um, or something like that. So just something to think about, um, just using the paper instead of uh, some of the different wood embellishments and things like that. That's why I went with the paper, because I wasn't sure if it was going to sit or stand or um, be up on a wall, because it could really do any of the three. Well, it doesn't really matter where you put them, but you do have to put the color side up. Gonna hit this with a little bit of heat gun so my butterflies don't move on me. <laughs> oh, woo! There went those butterflies. That's okay. Okay. 
two more things and this little baby's done. So a little bit of the tank, um, just to make those fun little dots. Just use the end of a uh, paintbrush. Dip it. And just dot your canvas. And that's going to dry with whatever peak you give it. So it's going to stay right there. And you're going to have that little bit of dimension and sparkle wherever you add it. wipe that off and last but not least because life just wouldn't be complete with a little without a little bit of stamping uh, you guys know I like to use my pit marker um, just color on there a little bit and add a little bit of rough swirls there I like to roll them on there and just uh, kind of push it on there. Um, not use a black. You could use a black, but I don't want anything too dramatic. I'm just trying to add to the texture of the canvas. Could use stays on ink. Um, anything um, waterproof would be fine. I'm just trying to add just a little bit of something there. Just stamp. And on the bottom. There we go. Let's see. That is dried up pretty good, so I can go ahead and do that as well. And then we'll wrap up for the night. Hmm. I cleaned my desk. And now I don't know where my stuff is. <laughs> Anybody else ever have that problem? Uh, just grab a white uniball pen. And on the other canvas, I had traced um, my Create. And that's all I'm doing here is just, um, I don't really need to with the stone effect, so I'm just going to add a little bit just to make it pop a little bit more. I'm not going to do the whole thing like I had on the other canvas because the stone effects is so much is showing up so much better than the metal effects did for this type of canvas against the colors that I used. So just roughly scratch that in a little bit here and there. a little bit and then uh, you can go in and add some some doodles around the butterflies if you want but she is done looks like I pulled a little bit of my color off so we'll just add some back on okay just under time 
pretty butterflies. Lots of texture. Lots of patterns. My camera is doing something wonky. But there we go. We are good. Um, size canvas. It is not huge. Um, it was a really odd shape. It's 12 by 4. Thank you, Michelle. You were right. Okay. Anything else before I stop the recording? Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I hope that you had fun. We're um, about 15 minutes under our hour. Okay. Well, thank you again. And you all have a wonderful night. And we'll see you next time. I hope that you uh, take the time to create something bright and pretty. And make sure if you do, just to share it with us on the Facebook page. We'd love to see it. Good night.